The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation has inaugurated the Board of Greenfield Refinery Limited, a subsidiary of the NNPC, to oversee the establishment and operation of new refineries. Group Managing Director Mele Kiari, as he swore in the new board members in Abuja, charged them to explore all options to bring an end to the current challenge of petroleum products importation. Omoshi Temi Tokpaya is an investment strategist at AfriInvest Security Limited. He now joins me now. AfriInvest Asset Management Limited. Uh, Moshi, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Starting with the new subsidiary that's been floated by the NNPC, um, I guess what do you make of it as far as where they're trying to go and ending this you know, petroleum importation regime that we're seeing? Well, I think um, it's very good uh, that um, the body's actually looking at the refinery and um, putting in place um, company that will focus on refinery is actually good we're looking at it in the purview view of um, of the new PIA so because now the authority this company will be saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that profit is made unlike you know the way things have been run throughout this whole um, bill so in the next although uh, there might still be question around how this whole structure the new refineries the green with uh, refinery limited will fit into the old grand plan but i think in you know the, before the f full implementation of of uh, the pib uh, i think the government still has about two years so we can't wait until some things are totally in place before we we get to do the right thing so looking at the refinery at this particular time is very good and we all know that one of the drawbacks to uh, nigerian oil and gas sector is um, uh, the dysfunctional refinery that we have in nigeria mm -hmm. and that has actually negated is you know it usually negates the impact of um, increasing oil prices on what nigeria gets because whenever oil prices are up we're supposed to throw a party and all that but we we'll always complain about landing cost so every effort to ensure that the nigerian refinery uh, space is revamped is really welcomed Fantastic. Now, of course, there's a lot of, um, it costs a lot in terms of foreign exchange to bring all these petroleum products in. I wanted to use that to segue into the recent weakening we've seen over the last 24 hours with the Naira. Is it summer period, people traveling? What, what, what do you make of, uh, of the 520 level, well, at least on the parallel market? Um, the FS market, we've been seeing a lot of back and forth, policy, the BDC ban and so I I think about two weeks ago or so I put out a paper that um, um, the FS market is not all about unification of the currency although that's a factor because research has shown that period of close um, um, divergence that is when there's a convergence between the official and the parallel market there's increase in capital importation but the major drawback to what we are seeing in the FS market is deficit supply. Mm. So long we continue to have mm. backlogs of demand and um, you know, supply is not meeting this demand, there continue to be significant pressure on the FS. So that's what we are currently seeing. And if there are no significant improvement to Nigeria current account balance and its impact on the FX, even to the end of the year, we might continue to experience same pressure because by November, December, you know, companies will start stocking, in increasing their inventory so as to, you know, meet December demand and into January. Mm, and you said that's okay. So January, we might hopefully see some pressure easing off. Well, January maybe, yeah. Okay. Um, the Sukuk bonds, as far as I want to move to that now, the Zainab Ahmed uh, revealing 669 or so billion that's been raised from there. Um, what do you make of the depth? I guess with that figure and the, the depth of the capital markets in terms of what can be raised for this type of infrastructure project. I think most of it is used for roads and yeah. so on, right? You know, Nigeria needs all the money. We can actually get at this time to plunge the huge um, infrastructure gap. Estimated, we need about um, 2.3 trillion dollars in the next um, 22 years, and it amounted to about um, 400 billion dollars per annum. So um, I think it's very good that the government is actually leveraging the um, uh, Nigerian capital market to finance uh, um, the infrastructure. But the downside is essentially that private entities, organizations, will rather. Uh, lend to the government than the private sector, which brings to fore the question around the crowding out effect. So how do you keep lending to the government at the detriment of the um, private sector? 
because you know rates are still quite attractive although we've seen significant decline in um, rates across the bond and the tb market and all but you know government continue as continue to compete with the private sector although like i said we need all the money we can get so the uh, and we also understand that the government usually um leverage the uh, uh, nigerian capital market so as to mitigate the exchange rate risk that comes with foreign borrowing mm -hmm. but the downside which i mentioned is that we also need the private sector to grow because this is where labor market or this is where jobs can actually be created so and i think the government is actually adopting or taking the right step with this infra corp so because this is it's just a platform to bring you know it's a consortium of experts in the uh, in, in in the financial space that will help government to actually um get fund um, um involve private sectors so as to know you know reduce the pressure on the nigerian capital market and i think it's it's, it's actually commendable because this um entity that's the infra will will partner with the cbn the NSIA uh, partner with the pension fund and other financial institutions. So I think the platform should be leveraged more rather than just crowding the private sector out of um, uh, the financial space. Mm, fantastic. Um, as far as the, as far as the, could this figure have been larger? This six hundred and sixty-nine billion. Yes. Said, if yeah? you, If you had, if you had a, a deeper financial market. If you had a deeper debt market, but because although we, you 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 agree with me that we've seen series of auctions this year. Virtually all the auctions were oversubscribed. Right. Why? Because they would rather, people would rather um, uh, lend to the government and the private sector because of still the inherent risk in, in, the, in the business environment in Nigeria. You know, we continue to talk about ease of doing business. Right. So long the ease of doing business is not there, so long it's very risky to put money in the Nigerian risk sector. Uh, you know, um, financial space would continue to look at government um in terms of borrowing and they will also despite the low rates you know the rate is quite low compared to inflation but a better hand is better than millions on the tree they would rather just keep the money there right. than having the money the, where they won't be able to get it back because it has implication for the mpls and the quality of asset in the financial space, space at large one thing is 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 linked to another um all right to so cape town what do you make of this experiments uh this cashierless uh, point of sale less uh, thing that they're doing over that ShopRite is testing in, uh, in I, Cape Town. I, I think it's, it's, it's quite interesting that, um, you know, ShopRite is um, actually exploring a new frontier. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting, although it's still a sound boss, but I believe that um, uh, at some point it will affect the company positively. But, you know, you, as an economist, I'll look at it from two sides. To the company, you know, it will enhance efficiency and in a way increase profitability. But as an economist, I would say it will cause structural unemployment, uh -huh. job. So, which is why we have continued to encourage government to ensure that there are policies, plans, and program in place to ensure that, you know, people are connected well, people are upgraded in terms of digitization so that they are employable when they are technology development. I'm also sure you team, talk about investment strategies with Afri Invest Asset Management Limited. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your insight.